In this video, I'll be discussing accounting for merchandising operations. This video is an introduction to those types of operations and inventory systems. A service company generates revenue by providing services. They record service revenue and typically their biggest expense is going to be salary expense. A merchandising company, on the other hand, generates revenue by buying and reselling goods. They record sales revenue and their biggest expense is going to be cost of goods sold, which is the cost of the goods that they sell. In terms of the differences between a merchandising and a service company's financial statements, a merchandising company is going to report inventory on the balance sheet, Inventory, we know, are the goods that are purchased for resale. And on the income statement, they'll be reporting sales revenue and cost of goods sold. So a service company's income statement is going to have service revenue minus expenses equal net income. For a merchandising company, typically cost of goods sold is broken out so that we have net sales revenue minus cost of goods sold we have a subtotal known as gross margin, and then we subtract out the rest of the expenses to come down to net income. Inventory is also known as merchandise inventory, and these are the goods that the company purchases for resale. The inventory account is going to be debited or increased when goods are purchased for the cost, which includes all costs incurred to get them ready for sale. So that's not going to be just the purchase price, but it's going to include any shipping cost paid by the buyer and any other cost incurred in connection with getting the goods ready for resale. Inventory is going to be classified as a current asset on the balance sheet. Companies are going to either use a perpetual inventory system or a periodic inventory system. At this point, because of barcoding and other advances in technology that make perpetual inventory systems more practical, most companies use perpetual inventory systems. We're going to spend a little bit of time talking about periodic inventory systems in this video and then focus on perpetual inventory systems going forward. With a perpetual inventory system, the inventory account balance is perpetually or continuously updated. So every time a purchase is made, we're going to debit or increase the inventory account. And every time we sell inventory, we're going to credit or decrease the inventory account and transfer the cost to cost of goods sold. Record, recall that cost of goods sold is an expense account and is increased by debits. Under a periodic inventory system, on the other hand, we do not continuously update the inventory account. When we purchase inventory, we use an account known as purchases, and cost of goods sold and the inventory balance are only adjusted at the end of the accounting period. So with a periodic inventory system, a physical count of inventory is required to be able to compute cost of goods sold for the period and adjust the inventory account balance. With a perpetual inventory system, we're continuously updating that inventory account balance, but we still need to do a physical count of inventory at the end of the period to confirm the accuracy of the balance. Under a periodic inventory system, we compute cost of goods sold by taking our beginning inventory, adding in our net purchases to get a subtotal called cost of goods available for sale. We then subtract out the ending inventory to come down to cost of goods sold. So beginning inventory is the inventory on hand at the beginning of the period. Net purchases is what we have purchased during the period. So if we add those two things together, that's going to be the cost of goods available for sale. If we subtract out the ending inventory, which is based on that physical count, and that's the goods that we have left at the end of the accounting period, 
the difference is going to be cost of goods sold. So we have an example. Fetterman Company uses a periodic inventory system. At the beginning of September, the company had an inventory balance of 1,000. So that's our beginning inventory. During the month, the company had net purchases of 5,000. And then at the end of September, which is our accounting period, they do a physical count of the inventory and it shows that goods, goods valued at $1,500 are on hand. So pause the video and compute cost of goods available for sale and cost of goods sold, and then think about what amounts will be reported on the September 30 balance sheet and income statement. So hopefully you took a moment and did this calculation. Beginning inventory is 1,000, net purchases are 5,000, cost of goods sold is therefore 6,000, we subtract out the ending inventory of 1500 and cost of goods sold is 3500 The company would then make an adjusting entry at the end of the accounting period to remove the purchases account from the books and record cost of goods sold and update the inventory balance. So that inventory of $1,500 is going to be reported as a current asset on the balance sheet and cost of goods sold of $3,500 will be reported on the income statement.